Hey everybody, continuing our parallel RLC discussion. So it is a second order circuit, right? Because we have here a second order ODE. How do you solve a second order ODE? You can basically guess, say the solution looks like some sort of exponential function. Okay, so when we do that, when we substitute our guess, into the ODE, we get something that looks like this, which then we have this characteristic equation that must be satisfied because it was this times this equals zero. This is not zero, so therefore this must be zero, which leads us to this characteristic equation, which determines how the circuit will behave. So it's a quadratic, and then when we solve for the roots of the quadratic, we got three different possibilities. So where we have this Nieper frequency and this undamped natural frequency, it just depends which one is more than the other. So if alpha is larger than omega, then we have two real roots, and that is called overdamped. Okay, if alpha equals omega, you have repeated roots, and that's called critically damped. Okay, and then if alpha is less than omega, we have two imaginary roots, and this is called underdamped. Okay, so we have three different situations. So let's go over the three situations. So first situation, alpha is larger than omega. So then our voltage was supposed to be a e to the s t, but then s had two answers, alpha like this, right? So we have two answers. So one of them is, let me just substitute in there. Oh, there's a minus sign here. So minus alpha plus this. T, and then the other solution was minus alpha minus that whole thing, T. All right, so let me go back here. All right, so we have two solutions, this one and this one. So we're just going to take a linear combination of the two, like this. So for arbitrary coefficients, a1 and A2. So this and this, these are just arbitrary coefficients. You'll need to solve for them. We can do that later. Okay, so this is the answer for overdamped if alpha is greater than omega for arbitrary coefficients A1 and A2. Now, what does it look like? Let's take a look at this. Is this a positive number or a negative number? Is this a positive number or a negative number? Let me draw a triangle like this. Okay, I'll make this side omega, I'll make this side alpha, and I'll just call this some other letter, h. Okay, so here, this has gotta be square root of h squared plus omega squared, right? This is a right triangle. Okay, let me rewrite this. Alpha squared equals h squared plus omega naught squared. Let me move this on this side of the equation. Okay, and now like this. Okay, so you see right here, this is this, right? Now look at the triangle. Which is more. So h is, let me write it right here, square root of alpha squared minus omega squared. For sure, this is more than this, right? Because this is the hypotenuse. This is more than this. Now look over here. This is more than this, right? So see how this is negative alpha plus so for sure, 
this is a negative quantity, right? Now look over here. This, I mean, they're both negative, so for sure this is negative. So this is negative, this is negative. So what does the voltage look like? It's e to the negative something. So it definitely looks like this. Okay, so when you have the overdamped situation here, the voltage will decay exponentially. All right, now let's try out this repeated root if alpha is equal to omega. So the voltage, right, was, I'll use a different coefficient. I mean, these are just arbitrary. E to the minus alpha alpha squared minus omega squared, but if they're equal, then this is zero. So then we only have this. So then if I do a linear combination, there's only, there's supposed to be two roots, but it's repeated. So I'll just tell you the answer here. T e to the, okay, so this is the answer. Make note of the extra variable time right here. All right, so e to the minus alpha t, t e to the minus alpha t. All right, so it's a combination like this. And this is for critically damped. Okay, when alpha equals omega, critically damped. Okay, what does this look like? This is e to the minus something, t e to the minus something, and it just, let me draw it on the same picture. It looks like this, um, other way around. Okay, so this would be the critically damped one, and then over damped, still decaying exponentially, but not as fast. Okay, now last scenario, this one, underdamped, so where alpha is less than omega. So the solution was a e to the this, but then this is minus alpha plus or minus alpha squared minus omega squared. But if this number is less than this number, then this is negative, right? So why don't I, I'm just gonna swap them. I'm gonna factor out a minus one. Okay, I just reverse these two to factor out this negative one. Now, what is square root of negative one? Imaginary number, right? So in most science physics, like imaginary number is I, but in electrical engineering, since we use I for current, we're gonna call the imaginary number J. That's the one where it's like this, right? Imaginary number. So I'll use imaginary number J to not mix it up with current I. Okay, so, so I don't have to keep writing this over and over. I'm just gonna call this omega D, which is the damped natural frequency. Omega naught was the undamped natural frequency. Okay, so just to distinguish, and so then we have two roots still. So let me just substitute those here. So I'll just use some other arbitrary coefficient. So it's e to the minus alpha plus j omega d t, and then e to the minus alpha minus j omega d t, right? So I have two of them, and these are just arbitrary coefficients, d1 and d2. And let me simplify this just a little bit. So we have e to the minus alpha t, e to the j omega d t, right? See, I just split it up like this. And then from here, d to e to the minus alpha t, e to the minus j omega t. 
And already, look, I have, oh, there should be a one. Okay, so I have a common factor here. I can factor that out. Okay, and then look at this. I'm gonna use Euler's formula. So, okay, so right here, Euler's formula. See if it looks familiar. Cosine plus J sine, right? So this is this by Euler's formula. Okay, and then now this would be cosine minus J sine. Okay. So this turned into this by Euler's formula. Okay, it's still a mess, but let me find some common factors here. So here there's cosine, cosine, right? So let me combine d1 plus d2 cosine. And then here I have j sine minus j sine. So I can combine those. J sine. Okay. But this is supposed to be the voltage, right? What's up with this imaginary number? So if these two arbitrary coefficients are complex conjugates, if they're complex conjugates, remember complex conjugates? Let me just make up a number. Like say, um, two plus three J. That's a complex number. What is the complex conjugate? Two minus three J. And this is just for some arbitrary real component, for some arbitrary imaginary component. What is D1 plus D2? If I add these together, four, that's it, right? It's real. So for whatever we pick, for sure, this is real. Okay, what if we go D1 minus D2? What do we get? We get zero plus six J. So that's still imaginary, but there's another J right here, right? So D1 minus D2 times J would be six J squared, which is negative six, which is also real, right? So as long as D1 and D2 are complex conjugates, and again, these are just arbitrary coefficients, this is also real. So I'll just call it some other letter. I'll call it C1, C2, right? So the voltage is E to the minus alpha T times C1 cosine of omega D T plus C2 sine of omega D T. For arbitrary coefficients, C1 and C2, they're just arbitrary. Okay, and then again, omega D was square root of omega, not squared minus alpha squared. Okay, right, this is the damped natural frequency. Right, so this is the underdamped response. And what does this look like? It looks like a decaying exponential, e to the minus something, times a sinusoid. So it looks like this. Okay, so now let me put all three responses on the same picture. Okay, so underdamped looks like this. Critically damped looks like, say like this. And then overdamped looks like this. Okay, so this is overdamped. This is critically damped. And this is underdamped. All right, so now 
maybe let's save this for another video, how to actually solve for numbers and solve for these arbitrary coefficients. So let's get that to the next video. So I'll see you on that one.